The most common obstacle is finding the time to meditate. But it really doesn't matter if you miss a day or three. A regular practice is the most effective. But what truly matters is that you pick up where you left off and give yourself that 10 or 15 minutes or whatever duration you choose to look after your health of your mind. Feeling sleepy and perhaps even nodding off is also normal when beginning a meditation practice. That's because the mind confuses doing nothing with relaxation. Eventually, it will know the difference between a relaxed focus, what you're trying to achieve, and total relaxation, a byproduct of meditation. Three tips that might prove helpful to stay alert and awake. Meditate sitting upright, not lying down. Try meditating first thing in the morning when the mind is a little bit brighter. Open a window, let in some fresh air. Many first timers believe a library like Hush should greet every meditation session, which leaves them extra sensitive to every little distraction and sound. It is important to know you are not meant to be in total silence. You are simply meant to settle into your environment with all its accompanying sounds, be it a noisy neighborhood, screaming kids in the street, or a reversing truck. Rather than dwelling on those sounds or trying to tune them out and getting frustrated when you can't, allow them to come and to go without resistance. Of course, if you are struggling with this in the beginning, you can always try earplugs or noise-canceling earphones. It is always easy to start something new. A new diet a new exercise regimen, a new hobby. But the tricky part is keeping it going. Early enthusiasm wanes. The novelty wears off. This is a common issue with meditation, especially because the exercises can sometimes feel repetitive. So it's worth remembering that we are training the mind to shift the way we relate to our thoughts and feelings. And that takes time, perseverance, and discipline. One reason people throw in the towel is frustration. Frustration that the mind won't empty or clear. Going in, it's important to know that the mind is always going to think, because that is what it's programmed to do. Meditating won't magically stop the thoughts, but it will teach you to step back and observe them without judgment or bias. The purpose is to allow thoughts to come and go. It is a skill to be learned, practiced and mastered. And we can only master the skill by building a habit. We are trying to move away from our human doing and connect to our human being. Moving away from feeling valued and validated by your actions and doing and remembering or rather realizing that you are enough by just being. So instead of trying to clear and empty your mind, we will first try to notice our awareness reaches further than just your thoughts. How our thoughts are a small aspect of our being. Thoughts will come and go because it is the natural rhythm of the mind to be an alert system of our surroundings. Our mind also acts as a warning system and will always be analyzing and channeling stories and memories. 
Because the way our mind works is like a predictor. It uses the information of the past to calculate options to give in the present moment, serving you to try and make your life more comfortable and easier. The mind, like the ego, loves instant gratification and hates hard working and suffering. Thus, it will do everything in its power to avoid pain and to try to calculate the best option out and away from pain and discomfort. Sometimes, the mind and ego undergoes an unrealistic approach, though. Life is not meant to be without discomfort. It is suffering that is optional when we dwell on something and the mind tries to go over and over a situation to see how it can change the outcome. Experiencing the same situation more than once is a form of torture, if you ask me. Because for our subconscious mind, time doesn't exist. So every time the thought or memory is fed by attention in your mind, it is as if that event or situation is really happening in the present moment again. You can observe this by how you feel. The same bodily response will be triggered by your nerves and hormones. We are not free from the grip of that which is happening to us. We do have the power to reprogram our mind to notice when our mind is trying to do this. Learning to meditate will help you to do this. In this course, we will use the 2190 rule. 21 days to create a new habit and 90 days to build it into your lifestyle. This is only a guideline and not a rule or a command. Because from a scientific point, this is how long it takes to create a new habit. I also understand the fact that nature cannot be placed in a box. We are all unique beings and this rule might end up being an exception for you personally. Whatever you choose to believe, the fact that we are creatures of habit is the truth. The mind loves repetition, and if we want to rewire our mind to fire in a different pathway, then we have to repetitively align action to intention. So you might find the repetition of the same meditation a bit annoying and some stage you might even know the words off by heart. But this is a very good sign. It means you are reinforcing the meditative pathway in your mind. After a while, you will notice that as soon as you have the intention to sit down for a meditation, that you are already leading to that state before the meditation fully starts. This is all progress.